Happy Thursday. At least I think it's Thursday. Otherwise I wouldn't be streaming, I guess. Okay, so the plan today is I get through an SL paper relatively quickly so that I have time to play Jump King. I want to try to finish the sewers. That's my goal for today. Get through the sewers to the next stage. And we'll go from there. Uh, I can't stream for that long today though, so I think that's a reasonable goal. But I don't know. I could just be stuck on green for hours. So we'll just see. Where's my calculator? Okay, this looks like a cosine sine law question. So let's see if it actually is. Find the length of BC, so right here. And from the setup, this is definitely a sine law question. Uh, so X divided by sine of its corresponding angle should be equal to five divided by the sine of its corresponding angle. And realistically, the only way I can see people having difficulty with this question, it's not even difficulty, it's just you might lose marks if you're not in degree mode. But luckily, I just changed it before we started. Okay, so this means that x is going to be sine 50 uh, times 5 divided by sine 112. So 4, 1, 3. And then hence, or well, find the area of the triangle. So let's see. To find the area of the triangle, I should find out what this angle is. And then I can use the one half AB sine C area of a triangle formula. So 180 minus 112 minus 50 is 18. So this angle is 18. So now we can do 1 half times 5 times 4.13 uh, times, not cosine, sine of 18. So here is the area of my triangle, 3.19. Okay. Try to speed run this so I get maximum jump king time. But we'll see. Today's Thursday. For those that watch regularly, that means Jazz probably has an assignment due, so she might be asking questions. Okay. To find the x intercept of any function, uh, we substitute in. Well, actually, never mind. Y intercepts imply uh, the y value is zero. If you have some sort of rational function, the only way for this rational function to be equal to zero is if the numerator is zero. So we just solve for x when the numerator is zero. And when we do solve, we will get the root of 2 over 3. And given the domain, we do not need to include the negative root. And we can just keep the positive one. All right, then let's see. The graph has a maximum at point A. Write down the coordinates of A. Uh, because it's a paper 2, we don't need to use calculus. 
we can just put it into our graphing calculator. So six x squared minus four divided by e to the power of x. Oh, my window's weird. Okay, I'm gonna change the window so that it fits the window that they gave me on the grid. So x minimum is zero, x maximum is seven, y minimum is negative five, y maximum is five. So here we are. So like I said, we don't need to optimize using calculus because you can just second calculate a maximum. Okay, and then according to TI-84, move your cursor to the left of the maximum, the right of the maximum, and then move your cursor close to the maximum. So here we are, 2.29 and 2.78. So A has these coordinates. And then on the following grid, sketch this graph. Well, you just copy this. So at 2.29, we have 2.27. So something like here. We have an x-intercept at root two over three, which is apparently close to one. And good enough. I don't know why they ask sketching questions on a GDC because what's the point? You just kind of copy it from the graph, right? The graphing calculator. Let's see. Uh, this is a vector question. I'm going to skip it because it's no longer part of the curriculum. And here we have a table for the probability of a discrete random variable. And we need to find the value of k. So as you know, these are all of the probabilities. So when you add them up, this has to be one. Something has to happen. So what we can do is we can solve this equation on a GDC. Uh, I, like I said from other videos, I don't like using the equation solver. I just would rather graph this function and then see the intersection with uh, one, which is what I'm gonna do. So two x squared plus x divided by 10 plus six. Actually, these two are gonna be eight together. So there's eight graph. And here we go. That is my intersection. So I'm going to change my window. I don't need it to go all the way to seven. This should make it look a little bit, make it easier to see. And then let's calculate the intersection. So first curve, second curve. If you only have two graphs, you can just press enter twice and then move your cursor to where you approximately want it to be. So we have this, uh, K is 0.25, which is one quarter. And now we can find the probability that X equals two. So it's going to be one quarter over 10, which is one out of 40. And then uh, what's next? Find this conditional probability. You know that it's larger than zero. 
So find out the probability that it's two. So from our conditional probability formula, uh, I forget the notation off the top of my head. I think it's something like this. I don't know, it doesn't matter. Okay, and then for each of these, uh, the probability that it's greater than zero would be these three probabilities. Uh, I guess I should calculate what they are. So if k is one over four, then k squared is one over 16. And then if you times that by two, that's one over eight. This was one out of 40. And then this is Again, one out of 16 times six. So three out of eight. So honestly, I don't know why I'm doing this as fractions because I have a calculator. Okay, let's just go here, quit. So one divided by eight plus one divided by 40 plus three divided by eight is 0.525. And then this one is a tricky one if you don't understand what it means. That what is the probability that you are two and at the same time you're greater than zero. Well, if you're two, then you're greater than zero. So this is essentially just asking, what's the probability of it being two? Uh, this, this intersection part's redundant. So uh, we know what that is. That's one out of 40. And man, this is gonna look weird. So it's one out of 40 divided by this decimal. Okay, so this decimal, one divided by 40, divided by this decimal, which is this. <laughs> to three sig figs. Maybe today will be a chill stream. That's good. So here's our function. It's gonna th go through this point and then we need to find the value of P. Okay. <coughs> so what they're saying is Actually, I guess this should be considered p. So we're solving this equation essentially for when it's equal to four, because you know the y value is four. And again, expediting process here, six minus the natural log of x squared minus two plus two, and then find out when this is equal to four. Okay, and then we're considering P to be the positive value, so it's not this one, uh, it's this one. So 2.32. Okay, and then let's see, this is the region enclosed between negative p to p. Hello, Quinn, how are you? And then we need to find the volume of rotation. So I'm skipping this one because again, 
no longer part of the curriculum. So I'm making good time, especially if I don't have to do all of these ones that don't matter anymore. I'm all right, waiting for the weekend. Hope you're ready to learn all of this stuff next year. All right, what is this? Okay, we have this expansion. The coefficient in term in the x to the power of 5 is this. Hence, find the value of a. Okay, so we're going to use the binomial expansion theorem on this binomial part, of course. And then you have to keep in mind it is being multiplied by a uh, to the x cubed. So in other words, uh, 11880x to the power of 5. This is an HL. This is SL. Okay, so this is what it is. You know that this x to the power of 5 term is going to come from multiplying at a x cubed with some other x factor here. But because you know it's to the power of 5, you know that this should be 2. So essentially what this is saying is you need to find out the x squared term in this binomial expansion. Because that's going to multiply with the x cubed term, which makes the x to the power of 5 term. Okay, so from here, I need to find that coefficient, which is 11, and then we have 2, actually, I'm going to switch it around, so actually, it doesn't matter, no, it doesn't matter. Okay, this is just binomial expansion theorem of this. And I know that this should be 2 because I need x squared. So what does that mean? That means that this coefficient is equal to a uh, times 11c2 times 2 to the power of 9 uh, times a squared. So let's see, what is 2 to the power of 9? Oh, I thought it'd be bigger than this. Shame on me, 512. Actually, OK, that's 512. Let's find 11c2. So 11 C2, 55. And let's just continue solving for A. Uh, so I'm going to divide by 55. I'm going to divide by 502. And then I got to cube root this, right? So to the power of one third. So 0.75. Oh, that's nice. So a is 3 over 4. Okay, what's next? Heights of adult males in this country are normally distributed. Uh, they have an average of 180 centimeters, standard deviation of something. 17% of these men are shorter than 168. 80% of them have heights between 192 minus some number and 192. Find the value of H. Okay, so draw a picture.
the average height is 180 and you know that the number of men that are shorter than 168 well, it's 17% of men, so 0.17 represents this area here. Okay. And then, what we're trying to find out is between 192 and some number so 192 minus h this is going to be 80 percent and then we need to find what what, what number this is Okay, so I'm not entirely sure how to approach this, but I don't know my standard deviation and I feel like you do need to find it. So whenever you don't have it and you need to find it, uh, we are going to need to do some uh, standardizing. Now luckily, I know that the probability of a person being less than 168 is 0.17. Hello, serpent. Ready for more jump king later? So what we're going to do is we're going to standardize this. So Z and then uh, the z-score is going to be uh, the original boundary minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. And this will have the same area of 0.17. Okay, from here, uh, we can get the z-score by inverse normaling. The goal today is to make it past the sewers. I think that's a reasonable goal. Okay, so distributions, go to my inverse normal, and then my area is 0.17, and then this is why I standardized it. Standardized are always have an average of zero, standard deviation of one. So the z-score is negative 0.954. Okay. Now, on the other side of this equation, uh, I can take this expression for the z-score. Uh, what is 68 minus 80? Negative 12. So, so taking this expression, I know that it should be equal to this z-score from the inverse normal. And then that means that your standard deviation going to be negative 12 whoops negative 12 divided by negative 0.954 so 12.5 well 12.6 okay now we can start to ask the the big question. Which is, how much do I need to subtract from 
190 to get this area of 0.8. So what are we going to do first? Well, we can find the probability that the person is shorter than 190. So we go to normal CDF, right? Uh, and then our lower boundary is whatever this is. Uh, our upper boundary is 190. Or sorry, upper boundary is 190. Our average is 180. And this is why we need the standard deviation so that we could calculate this probability. Standard deviation is 12.6. So that is 78%. Uh oh. I guess I messed up somewhere. Let's see. Is this being tricky on purpose? So apparently, this area is 0.786, which doesn't make sense because that's less than 0.8. Hey, Kiwi Gamer. How's it going? Because I was thinking that this would be more than 80%, and then you just find out, you know, what the boundary is of the difference between this probability in 80 and then you can calculate what h is we'll start a proof writing book nice proofs are fun so weird i don't know where i went wrong oh 192 maybe that's where i went wrong This should be 192. Let's try this again. There you go. Okay, so this is 0.829 rounded, so 0.83. All right, so that means that this little piece right here needs to be 0 0.03. So what I'm going to do is, topology is crazy. Abstract algebra, also pretty crazy. So now I know my area, and my average is 180, and my standard deviation is 12.6. I can't believe that this is a seven mark question. So this boundary should be at 156. And then from here, we can calculate what H is. Should be 34. Hope I did that right. All right, on to section B. Okay, because this is the only, realistically the only part in IB that they can ask you to linearly regress something because you need a calculator, this will always just be in paper too. You're going to have a linear regression. So we're going to linear regress N onto P. So I'm going to go into my list and then I got to clear these out. Okay. 
So my first list is going to be my n values. So 190, 220, 250, 285, 305, and 320. And then my second list is going to be the p values. So 900, 1100, 1200, 1500, 700, and 800. Okay. And then we go back to stats and then we calculate the linear regression. So my x variable is the list in, well, list number one. So everything checks out. So here it is. So my a value is 11.5. My b value is negative 1,776. So 11.57780 because you need three significant figures. Three significant figures. Okay, and then use this regression to estimate the monthly honey production if you have 270 bees. So now we just plug in 270 into our equation. So So 11.5 times 270, subtract 1780, 1325. Okay, and then there's a cumulative frequency graph. And, oh my god, why are so many questions? Okay, I want everything to fit beside each other. Okay, this looks good. Okay, Adam's hives are labeled as low, regular, or high production, according to this table. So if you make less than 1,080, you are low production. And then here's a regular amount. We don't know how much is the upper boundary, so We'll probably figure that out later. First off, find the number of low production hives. So here are the number of hives in total on the left. And here is the production of honey. So what I do is I find where 1080 is, which is like probably like right here. which means there are about 40 low production hives. Okay, and then uh, Adam knows that 128 of his hives have regular production. So that means that I add hundred and twenty eight to forty, which is a hundred and sixty eight. And then I wonder if I could actually not estimate this. So there's five squares, twenty, so each square is worth four. So two squares up from one sixty. We hit the line and then we find out the upper boundary is right here. Okay, uh, five squares is worth 200, which means that each square is worth 
40. So k is 1640. And then find the number of hives that are in high production. So that is from 168 to 200. So let's see, clear. So 200 hives, which is the total amount of hives, minus 168 hives that are not high production. So 32 are high production. Okay. Then let's see, he decides to increase the number of bees in the low production hive. Research suggests there's a probability of 0.75 that it becomes a regular hive. Calculate the probability that 30 low production hives become regular production hives. Okay, so we switch from linear regression to cumulative frequency to a binomial distribution. So we know uh, that there are 40 low production hives. And we want to find the probability uh, that 30 of them are gonna become regular production. So this means that we have a random variable that's binomially distributed. There's again 40 hives and the probability of each one being successful in turning into a regular production is 0.72. 0.75 and I am interested in 30 successes. So let's go to binomial PDF, 40 hives, probability of each hive turning into regular production and I'm interested in 30 of them. So Here's your probability, 14.4%. This was a weird question. It's really disjointed. And there should be two more questions, right? Whoa, okay, three more. Okay, typical calculus physics question. Particle, here's the acceleration. Write down the values when the acceleration is zero. So I can just graph this and then find the x-intercepts. So three x squared minus 14x plus eight. So at, I'm guessing two thirds and at four. Okay, hence or otherwise, find the possible values of t uh, for which the velocity is decreasing. Okay, velocity decreasing means that the derivative of the velocity needs to be negative. And the derivative of velocity is acceleration. So we just look at where the acceleration is zero, which is, or negative, which is between two thirds and four. All right, and then when time is zero, velocity is three. Find the expression for velocity. In other words, uh, velocity is the integral of acceleration. So I need to integrate this, which shouldn't be too bad.
So this is going to be t cubed minus 7t squared plus 8t plus c. And they tell me that at time 0, this should be equal to 3. So if I plug in 0 as t, that means that essentially my constant is 3. So here's my full expression for the velocity. Okay, and then what's next? Find the total distance traveled by p when the velocity is increasing. Okay. To find the total distance traveled when the velocity is increasing. So velocity is increasing uh, between two-thirds and greater than four. So from four seconds to five seconds. And this is similar to this question about velocity decreasing. Uh, it is going to be increasing when your acceleration is positive. So between zero and two thirds, and then from four to five seconds. Okay. Now you also need to know what the velocity graph looks like. So that's t cubed minus seven t squared plus eight t plus three. Okay. So, and then I'm just going to highlight some things. Okay. So when the velocity is increasing, that's the shaded region here of time. My, so when I take the integral of the velocity, which is this purple graph, right? Um, Here, let me just show you. Mm, I think I should be able to do this, so. Okay, whatever, it doesn't matter. So let me just do a quick sketch so that I can show you this. So here's what my velocity looks like in the sections where the velocity is increasing. So if I want to find total distance, right, I'm going to take the integral. So first I take the integral from zero to two thirds, and that's going to be this area right here. Now, when you take the integral from 4 to 5, uh, 
it's going to be negative value because your area is below the x-axis. So if you were to just add these two areas together, you actually get a smaller result because, well, positive plus negative, right? And we want to find the total distance. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to subtract the negative part so that it adds to the positive one. And that's what I'm going to do. So. So you can calculate integrals, definite integrals in your graphing calculator. And I think I can just do it here. So, so the integral from zero to two thirds of my function minus the integral from four to five of my function again. So we have traveled a total distance of 14.2, probably meters. That's a tricky question. Hello, Vincent. Amon Vincent. How are you? You're almost just in time. I'm on the second to last question, and then I'm gonna play Jump King. So we'll see how everything goes. I'm okay. A little busy, a little busy. Basically, this week I don't have to teach classes. So it was supposed to be dedicated towards marking my Gertol's IAs, except I'm constantly being interrupted uh, because there's no substitute teachers. So they're calling me in to cover. So I'm a little behind on work. And your tests, I'm hoping to take them home over the weekend so that you'll get them back on Monday. And then at the same time, I have my own personal master's homework due tomorrow. And as you can see, my house has been cleaned up because I was selling it. And on Tuesday, I found a buyer, hopefully, if everything goes through. So now I'm also on the hunt for a new place. So lots of things, lots of things. And my homework's due tomorrow and I haven't even started, but that's fine. It's okay. I'll play Jump King and all my stress will go away. So what the heck is this? We have a graph, sure. Show that f of 2 pi is 2 pi. Yeah. In this particular market, no one's going to wait for you to, like, no one's going to give you their place in the promise that you will sell yours in the future. They want their money now because there's lots of people that already have the money ready. So you got to be competitive which means you just sell first. And then in the contract, you say, you know, to the person that's buying your place, give me three months to find a new place. No, I'm staying here. So I have until like summer, essentially, to find a new place before we get kicked out of here. Oh, well, so what is this? I guess I just plug in two pi and see what happens. Why y'all want a new place? Because we want two bathrooms. I want to poop in peace. Okay, so I plug in 2 pi, 2 pi minus pi over 2 is 3 pi over 2. Sine of 3 pi over 2. What is that? negative one so 
So this becomes 2 pi minus a plus a. So, huh. I guess those a's cancel out, and then I show that f of 2 pi is 2 pi. Look, you, you guys probably understand, right? Someone's using the washroom, and then you really need to use your washroom too. We're only a two-person household, so having two washrooms means that we will both always be able to both go to the washroom whenever we please. Wow, you're actually doing your EE? That's crazy. Okay, what's next? This graph goes through the origin, so that means that if I plug in zero, I should get zero. Okay, let PK be any point on the graph with the X coordinate 2K pi, where K is a natural number. And then a straight line is going to go through all of the points, PK. Then we need to find the coordinates of P0 and P1. Okay, well, P0 means that K is 0, which essentially means that the X coordinate is 2 times 0 times pi, which is 0. So what's the coordinate when the X value is 0? I already know it goes through the origin. So the coordinates of P0 are 0, 0. Hey, Tofu Char. We are almost going to do Jump King soon. I got to finish up this question and one more. Likewise, when P is P1 means that K is 1, which means that your X value for this coordinate is, well, 2 times 1 times pi, which is 2 pi. And we already know what the Y value of this is from part A. So P1 has the coordinates 2 pi and 2 pi. <clears throat> Hence, we can find the equation of L, so we know two points. Uh, so, pretty straightforward. The slope is 2 pi over 2 pi. So 1. In other words, the line is y equals x. And you know, you can use point slope form, point gradient form, using the point zero, zero. This week has gone by so fast. Well, yeah, there's, it's only been four days, right? Okay, then uh, let's see. Show that the distance between the X coordinates PK and then PK plus one is two pi. Okay, so. PK has the coordinates according to this formula, right? Y equals X. 2K pi and 2K pi. PK plus one, same thing. This is 2K plus one pi and two K plus one pi. And we need to find the, wait, show that the distance between the X coordinates. Oh, okay. So we just need to find the difference between the X coordinates, which is easy enough to do. So I'm going to take two K plus one pi and then subtract two K pi. And then this just is two pi. There you go. This is such a weird question. It's really testing uh, your function notation, essentially. And like, yeah, really testing your function notation. It's not a hard question. It's just so weird. Oh, and then this is a continuation.
What even is this question? Okay, so we have a saw right here, and then the teeth can be modeled using F. And then here's the line L, the straight line. And then we wanna show the shaded graph. So this is a tooth, okay. Tooth is represented by the region. A saw has this tooth edge. 300 millimeters long. Find the number of complete teeth on the saw. Okay. So I know that this is 300 and I know that each tooth has a length of two pi. That's what we found out earlier, right? From PK to PK plus one is two pi. So I need to find out how many two pi's fit in this horizontal distance. Which begs the question, I need to find out what, uh, what this horizontal distance is. Okay, so we're gonna use, what, trigonometry? And again, I know that this line has a slope of one. In other words, whatever distance this is, the rise has to be the same amount. So from here, I can just use Pythagoras to find out the distance and then divide by two pi. Man, that is some very tricky thinking. And I would not expect a lot of students to be able to do that in a test situation. So let's see, oh, I did this wrong, oops. Yeah, the angle is 45, so you could also use trigonometry as well. And use like sine or cosine, 45. So yeah, let's just do that. That's a little bit quicker. So 1045 is D over 300. Oops, not 1045, cosine. So the horizontal distance of the saw is 300 times 1045, although Am I in degrees? Yes, I am. Oops, not 10. <laughs> oh, it shouldn't, okay. Sine and cosine are gonna give me the same result, so it doesn't matter which one I use. Uh, so two, one, two. And then I'm going to find out how many teeth there are. So then I divide this by two pi. And we should have 33 teeth, complete teeth. What exam was this? May, no, November 2017's exam. This is such a weird exam. This question is so weird. This one was tricky too. And then this one was just weird as well. This is a very odd exam. I'm gonna not gonna lie. This one was also kind of a difficult question. The rest are straightforward though. Maybe they curved it? Yeah, of course they're gonna curve it if because I don't think there was a particularly good average for
for this exam. Okay, well we're gonna check our answers. Just under an hour's worth of work. That's pretty good. Okay, 413, 413, that's good. Uh, the area is 319, I have 319. Okay, two over three, root two over three. Uh, coordinates of A uh, are right here. So that's the same as that one. Here's the graph, here's your graph, same thing. Still, I don't understand why they're asking you to sketch the graph on a paper two question where you have a GDC. I guess they are emphasizing a couple of things. You need to make sure you have the correct endpoints for the appropriate domain. Oh, I didn't do that because it's from zero to seven. So you got to stop it at seven. So I lost a, lost a mark there. Uh, I have the maximum, so that's fine. And then approximate x-intercept, so that's fine. Although at zero, it should be at four. Oh well, okay, I lost the mark on this one. Okay, and then I skipped this one because this one was vectors. Okay, k is one quarter, I have one quarter. Uh, Probability of being two is one out of 40, which is this decimal here. Uh, 476, 476. Uh, let's see, 232, 232. And then I skip this one because that's no longer part of the curriculum. Three over four, three over four. And then my H is 34, their H is 35.7. So I guess they did some rounding where I shouldn't have. So you see, they found the probability 0.83, so I have that. Yeah, so it, I think this is just rounding error. Okay. Why is my linear regression equation completely wrong? I have the right lists, I think. Oh, shoot. This should, should, this should be 900. I guess that messes up everything. Okay, so I guess I messed this one up. However, I substituted into my equation correctly, so I get full marks for the second part. Whoops. Okay, and then 40 hives, yeah. 1640, I have 1640, 32 hives. 144, 144. Yeah, I guess you gotta be careful of putting stuff into a calculator. Okay, two thirds, two thirds, and four. I have four. Uh, between two thirds and four, between two thirds and four. Okay, here's your function right there. I have the same thing. 14.2, 14.2. Okay, this one was a showing one, so that's easy. Uh, y equals x, I have that right here. And then the distance is 2 pi, that's easy to show. And then blah, 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 teeth, 33 teeth, 33 teeth. Okay, not bad. Still got a seven. Still haven't gotten a perfect score yet. Mostly due to silly mistakes, but well, that's fine with me. Very weird test and I feel very bad for the grad class of 2017 because that sucks.
Okay, let's put away everything. 2017? No, I didn't teach them. Uh, I think my first, my IB class was 2018? Maybe. Okay, so then there's this class, the 2021 class. So I'm, I taught these guys, or I am teaching these guys. I did not teach the 2020 class. And then, yeah, so this one, the 2019 class is my first IB grad class. And because I came to the school for the grad of the grad class of 2018, but I didn't teach the, the IB grad class of 2018. And then this is 2017. So this is the year before I even came. Oh well, not my problem. Time to play Jump King. Okay, remember the goal is we get past the sewers in an hour because I'm going to stop the stream at two hours. Okay, here we go, continue. I mean, I have, I... Oh, it tells me how many falls I've done? Don't look at that number. Wait, did I choose a new game? Shoot. No, I didn't, okay. I'm back. Okay, I'm gonna warn you. I'm probably going to need a warm up, which means that this is going to take a while for me to get a hang of things again. And I forgot how much power I need to put into each jump. Oh god. Yeah, I need a warm up. Okay, the goal is to get past the sewers. Don't worry. I think it's doable. Oh shoot, why did I walk off? See, look at this, it's coming back to me. It's fine. Fine. And wait, why are you concerned? Are you saying that that's too much time? Okay, how much do I need to jump here? I thought I'd just do a quick jump. Okay, I'm gonna just go to the edge and. Gonna be stuck for an hour here. Unbelievable. How did I get through here? Whoa. Quick jump with your foot hanging off. Okay, my foot's off. Did you see that? It didn't work. Isn't it just like the one below? Oh, okay, sure. Now it works. Oh no. That's weird, I've never had a problem with this jump. I should have paid attention far away I did that quick jump. Oh, okay. 
no. Okay, look, we're almost back to the sewers. Oh shoot, overjump. Okay, I got this. No, I don't. Look, we're back. See? Okay, this is a scary jump. I don't want to overjump this one. Nice. Oh, I forgot what this jump is. Okay. Things are going too smoothly. Maybe this is just my innate skill developing from the break. You know they recommend that. If you're like having trouble with something, you stop doing it. And then when you come back to it, like it'll still try to, pro your brain will try to process it in the background. So you might be better after you take a break. Maybe that's what happened. Yeah, I know, this is good progress. That's fine. Short jump, short jump, short jump. Oh my God. Do you guys see this? I basically beat the sewers already. Wow. Okay, I, I don't think I've gotten past this one. How far of a jump do you think this is? Three quarters? I'm gonna just go to the edge and try three quarters. I did it. First try. First try. What's this one? I did it. Wow. Okay, how do I get out of here? You're sorry you ever doubted? Okay. False King's Keep. Okay. Easy. Am I supposed to jump outside? I'm not going to jump outside. Oh no. At least if I fall, I'm not going to fall all the way down, you know? How do I get out of here? Okay. Oops. Okay, I just need to figure out like how I need to bounce around. off of this maybe oh nice can I do it again guess not okay I don't want to jinx it but I feel like I'm I'm not gonna go back to the green I feel like that's a possibility area. It's in the past. No more green. 
What do I do here? I think I need to jump across and then do a bounce. Yeah, see? Okay, I think I need to bounce off. Nope. Okay, how do I get there? I think I just need to jump up, right? Whoa. I don't think I'm struggling yet. Th this, this little section seems pretty easy so far. Okay, so bounce off here, then bounce off here, then bounce off here, bounce off here, jump over, bounce off here, and then jump over. Oh, why did I do that? Okay. Okay, this area is nice. They're nice. Yeah, I'm falling, but like I can't fall past here, right? So it's not that bad. And these jumps are pretty easy to make too. I just need to figure out... Okay, I need to figure out how much I need to jump from here. And try 75. Okay. So what do I do from here? I can jump to the right side, and then I need to jump onto that block, which I think is a 75. Look at this, easy. Okay, jump over here. Oh no. Do you guys see that? What I see? I have to jump outside. You guys know that this leads to the sewers, right? So if I mess this up, I go all the way to the bottom of the sewers. Okay. How much of a jump is this? I need to know. I don't think this is 75. This is a 50, right? You think it's better to overshoot? This is a definitely a 50, right? Okay. Oh God. Okay, you fall far, but at least you're at the cages. Never mind. <laughs> that's, that's so mean. <laughs> that's so mean. Oh no, oh no. Oh man. <laughs> oh my god, I was so close to seeing the old man again. That's the one thing I don't want. It's okay, we'll be back there soon. We'll be back there soon. This is Jump King. This is, this is Jump King. That's so far. I fell so far. I mean, yeah, that was two mistakes. You overshoot that one and then it messed up the cages. But still, you're punished so much for that. Okay, I need, a, I need a focus. Do not go to the old man.
Honestly though, I'm pretty happy. I wanted to beat the, the sewers and I beat it. And I almost beat whatever that the stage was afterwards. Oh God. I didn't, why did I just walk off? Lame goal. You know how long it took me to get to the sewers the first time I tried? The way I see it, this is a big improvement. But now I can't even get past green. Screw this old man. Like I just gotta, when you're out of green for so long, you just like lose it, you know? And then now I just have to warm up to green again. stuck in red? Whoa, I didn't want, sure. Why am I messing this up so much? Okay. Okay, we're back to the sewers. need to get past the cages. Oh no. Just need to get back to the cages. You know, I thought I was safe. But no, they just had to make you jump outside. So here I am. I think I jumped too close. That's okay.
not enough. Am I just gonna be stuck here for the next half an hour and then that's my stream? Possibly. Oh no. Focus. I think I jumped too far. Ah, oh, man. No. That's fine. I don't know why they don't. I mean, you know that grade. They're a little weird. You would think that they would, because it's like... Well, it's useful to have your math teacher readily accessible in the evening on a regular basis. water painted Jenny oh no oh no oh my gosh what do you do when you get to the cages screen? Are you playing too, Tofu? You gotta, you gotta short jump right at the edge of the cages. Cause if you, if you're able to do this jump, right? Like between the first log and the second log, then you should be able to do the cages. We should have a race.
now the purple pipe thing i'll win no doubt uh it's a 75 jump and you gotta stand on the middle of the purple pipe oh my god up. Where are you? I'll be at the cages in no time. You're talking about this pipe, right? Yeah, this one is the 75, but you can't stand on the edge. And then either that happens or you'll make it to the other side. <laughs> oh no, you're in green. Yeah. Jump. Jump. I jumped too early. What is going on? How did, why? Okay, I'm in green too, so the race is still on. Oh no, oh no, okay. I'm getting blown up. I need to focus. Okay, okay, I'm back. Back to the sewers. Never mind. Never mind, never mind, never mind. Where am I going? Ooh. I honestly can't tell if I've gotten better or worse. To the sewers. Never. Oh, that was close. Mm. 
No. Man, the sewers really punish you if you don't have your 75% jump down. Ages. Oh my god. Ah, oh, man. I don't know why I have so much difficulty with this jump. I know it's a 75. I just, and like you need to stand somewhere around here. Oh my god. Okay, stand on the flower on the right and then just do a 75 jump. Like these two jumps right here are 75, but like I normally don't have too much issue with these ones. Never mind. Okay, stand on the flower. 75 jump. Easy. flower 75 oh no okay stand on the flower 75 too much like this jumps also 75 but I don't have problems with that one nope Skip that one. Oh, you do it a different way? What?
Where did I go so wrong? I hate the cages. The cages are so scary to me. Oh no. Jump, jump, jump. Oh my gosh, I did it. Come on, oh my god. Jump. Okay, this one's just a full jump. Okay, this one's a 75. Come on. Okay, I got this. Never mind. I think I'm getting the hang of this. this the cages a bit. Oh no. I think once, okay, once I get to that, like, the kitchen area, it's not that bad. I just need to get to the kitchen area. Man, these sewers are brutal. Will I ever make it back there again? Today? You gotta believe. Okay, this one... I jumped too close. Or too far from the edge. just be stuck here for the next 15 minutes, aren't I? This is not good. 
I'm losing it. Oh no, <laughs> that's not good. difficulties with this one nowadays. Normally you don't? What? Oh, you don't do homework on the days I stream. But you should. Well, I mean, as long as you're paying attention to the math part, then I guess whether or not you need, at least you're getting some math review in. Oh gosh. It's hard for you guys because, well, you haven't learned everything yet. So when you start talking about like calculus or whatever, then you'll have no idea what's going on. No. Life advice. Jenny, what kind of life advice do you want? Give me give me a topic. How to do taxes. Taxes are easy. Um well, easy for most people because there's lots of free programs. And then essentially your employer is going to send you a letter called the T4 in Canada. And then in this letter, you have a bunch of numbers inside of boxes. And those boxes also are numbered. And then the program is just going to ask you like, okay, get out your T4. In box number 37, put that number into the program and then you just follow all the instructions um, if you are a university student then uh, your main university website should uh, give you a tax form for your tuition so you gain back some taxes because you're paying tuition um, if you have other jobs then you can file multiple t4s and that's really about it Do you have a TFSA R R R S P? Because once you set those up, then you know your bank will send you letters about those as well. So those are different forms. Again, just put the numbers into the right boxes. If you're a student and still dependent on parents, is that an option that you have to press? Um, I think so. But like dependency, legal dependency is slightly different. Like honestly, uh, for you, you just have a T4 uh, for your job and you have a, whatever it's called, a T, the one for school. And that's, and then once you leave school, that's about it. Then you just have T4s unless you start owning a business. But if you own a business, then you should just hire someone to do your taxes for you. 
So it's relatively simple. Which program do you recommend? Oh shoot, what program do I use? I haven't done my taxes for this year yet either, so I need to do that. Let's see. Although, okay, tax programs are supposed to be free, so don't get one that you have to pay for. That's stupid. <laughs> okay, it's not called TurboTax, Studio Tax. I use Studio Tax. Are outsiders allowed at the school? Yes, well, yes, they're not allowed, but we've had some students come back to visit already, but very briefly. And like, why are, like, what's your purpose of coming back? Is it just to say hi or do you have actual business? Because I think if you have actual business, uh, it's not that big of a deal. Cages. Not for business or tax help? I mean, I don't. I think it'll be okay. It's easier to ask for forgiveness than for permission. Like, I would try to avoid, you know, people that might recognize you, like uh, our principal. What if you teach us about life skills we need one day? Well, that's what the life advice uh, reward is for. Oh my God, I'm back. Where's Tofu Char? Are you still playing? Where are you? It shouldn't be, you got, you're in the kitchen too? Okay, I think there's multiple ways to do the kitchen, so yeah. Yeah, download whatever I said, studio tax, and it's pretty straightforward. You're basically following instructions. Five from just under the seventy five from here. Oh my god, oh my god. That was I think that was a seventy five. That was scary though. I was like here. Oh my okay, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. We're here, we're here. Okay, full jump. 75, 75, full jump. 
75. Okay, from the door, like here. 75. Nice. No. That's not bad. Okay. Oh. Why? Why does he just not- why does he not fall straight down? Why does he fall at an angle if you walk off the- if you walk off an edge? I don't get it. Like, like any other video game, if you walk off an edge, you're gonna fall straight down. You don't like continue to fall at an angle. Okay, I had it, which means that I can do it. That's the name of the game is failing. Yeah, I know how to do the outside one. And you see, cages, easy. Come on, uh. No, I did the same mistake again. I gotta stop walking off. I keep thinking I'm gonna fall straight down. Okay, I gotta focus, I gotta focus. I'm running out of time. Okay, this is my last attempt because I'm at two hours now. So wherever I end up is wherever I end up. Okay, I got 30 seconds left. Things are getting worse. Okay, exactly two hour stream. Back at the bottom of the sewers. I think I'm almost done the kitchen. So I don't know when I'm gonna be able to play this next, maybe Sunday but I think I can beat the kitchen. Because I think I was on the last screen of the kitchen. And then the next one is whatever the next stage is. <laughs> yeah, so if I have enough time on Sunday, that's the plan. And then we'll see from there. I feel like I'm not gonna beat this game. I think it would take me too many times on stream and I would get bored of it. But I think I still have a good one or two more streams of this. And then I'll move on to a different game. So I gotta think about what other game is entertaining for you guys to watch. Maybe Cave Story? No, not Cave Story. What's the game with like the whip? If any of you know what I'm talking about. Is it Cave Story 2? No, it's not Cave Story. I don't know. No, it's not Minecraft. I don't know. I'll go search it up, but I think that one will also be kind of fun to watch. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, that is a relatively chill Thursday stream. And yeah, I will be back on Polybridge. I'll look into it. And I'll be back on Sunday. Okay, guys. Have a good weekend. Have a good Friday. And yeah, I'll be back on Sunday. <laughs>